Well, the expansion draft have just finished. Well, it's been finished for the past couple of hours, but it's time to kind of take a look at what Charlotte FC selected in terms of the five players that they select in the expansion draft. And I said this before, you know, I feel like this year, the expansion draft, it's definitely not gotten as much hype as we have seen in previous expansion draft. And a lot of that has to do is the fact that it seem, seems like there's always like a new team coming into MLS every single year. The expansion draft almost felt like it's an annual kind of thing. But I think it's also due to the fact that, you know, it's only been two days since MLS Cup is over. And I don't think the media has gotten enough time to kind of talk about how the expansion draft is going to look like or even some some media member kind of write the article about a mock draft that is going to be happening in the, the expansion draft that charlotte is going to have but nevertheless in terms of the expansion draft that charlotte decided to select well there was definitely some surprises and there was also some expected players that they pick and then they kind of decided to play some 4d chess in in term, terms of making money uh, to LAFC and also with the Vancouver Whitecaps. Now, the first player that they selected in the expansion draft is Mackenzie Gaines from Austin FC. Now, this was a huge surprise. And I think it's a surprise, not only the fact that I thought he was not eligible to be, be end up on the unprotected list for Austin FC because he's a homegrown player. And I thought there was sp supposed to be a specific rule where, you know, if you're a homegrown player and especially a first year homegrown player, you are automatically protect protected in the expansion draft. But apparently I think that that rule that I thought was exist didn't exist. But I think the other thing that was very surprising is that Austin decided to not protect him like i get it he didn't get a lot of minutes la last year with austin but with the limited minutes that he he got i thought this kid had a lot of potential to be a very, very good player i mean he sh definitely showed some raw ability that he can he can do very good with austin and the fact that i've also heard that they decided to elect to pr protect rodney redis over mckenzie glanes and you know rodney redis last year he was one of those austin players that kind of had a really dis disappointing season in fact i think he probably was the most disappointing player with the money that austin spent in the expansion year to get him and he just turns out to pretty much did nothing with the team i thought they would maybe leave him on the unprotected list and at least protect their home chrome mckenzie games but apparently that's not not the case and this gotta be very heartbreaking if you're an austin fc fan because and certainly i, I don't know what's going to go through the minds of mckenzie Gaines. i mean he, he's probably heartbroken too. I mean, he's happy the fact that he's joining the expansion team, but you can definitely see when he, when he plays for his hometown team, especially when he scored that for, first goal for for his hometown team. You you can see what it means to him to finally represent his team. And I thought he was going to be a long term future for this Austin team. And little do we know that literally just a year later, he's now going to to another team. So I, I can't imagine how he he's feel. I don't think he's going to be be happy the fact that he's going to be leaving behind his hometown team but hey i guess that's that, that, that's how how the expansion draft sometimes work and we'll see you know I, I think charlotte is definitely going to get a a decent player and a guy that as i mentioned i think he definitely has a lot lot of upside in that this feels like a very low risk high reward kind of uh, situation and if they can develop him him a little bit better than what austin fc did as i mentioned i feel like he he, he really should have got more opera opportunity under josh wolf and if that he is going to get more opportunity for charlotte fc there's no doubt that he can definitely live up to his potential now the second pick of the expansion draft that charlotte fc chose was anton walks now this was actually a a pick that we kind of knew before the draft actually or the expansion draft actually happened because there was sources that anton walks was going to be selected to the expansion draft and usually when you have like sources that talk about you know the team is potentially select player usually i think 90 percent of the time that's true so it's kind of like the biggest kept secret the fact that charlotte was going to pick anton walks and indeed they did though i'm kind of surprised they didn't actually pick him him first and instead picking picking him in second and i think this is a very good good pick for shard fc probably the best best one out of these five picks that they made because you know this is a guy that that is a very good defender for this Atlanta team and was a uh, absolute rock in that back line for for Atlanta and uh it is pretty clear that when i look at some some of the picks that they have especially the ones that they kept it seems like they're they're focused more on the defense and that's understandable you know in the expansion draft this is a good opportunity to maybe sign some some defenders because because you know you can you basically get them 
for for free and then you can you maybe use that that money that you had to sign some dp kind of attacker that that this team is going to get in the offseason and again anton walks i think he's definitely one the better defender in the league and it's a good good selection for him for Charlotte, but it's definitely going to be a loss for Atlanta, who, you know, they already lost two two very good defenders this week in Franco Escobar and Anton Walks, and I'm going to be interested to see how they're going to maybe replay place both of them in the offseason. Now, another defender that they, they selected was Joseph Mora from DC United. Again, another very good good defender. Uh, play more in, I think, the, the, the fullback position, so there's, I think Charlotte have found themselves an answer in terms of of their fullback, and as I mentioned, Joseph Morris, you know, he's, he's definitely one of the more more underrated fullbacks in the league, he has played very well for DC, especially last season, and it's another good player that I think Charlotte is go, going to get heading into the expansion year. Now, as we get into the fourth and fifth pick, this is where I talked about earlier how Charlotte, you know, not only the fact that they were very smart in terms of picking some decent player on the defensive front, but they also knew that this could be an opportunity in the expansion draft where they can make some money and get some more more general allocation money and this is something that we have seen before with the expansion team you know needing needing more money so that they can pick a player and then maybe send them to another player to in order to get some gam well in this case uh they did that with tristan blackman after selecting them and immediately selecting him they trade him off to the vancouver whitecaps for three hundred thousand fifty k gam in 2022 and 125 thousand K or 125k gam in 2023 in a total almost almost 500,000 K that they got for Tristan Blackman for them to trade to Vancouver now despite the fact that I know some people will say that the Whitecaps maybe overpaid Tristan Blackman a little bit you gotta remember Blackman was a regular starter for LAFC and it just feels like you know for for I mean, I I don't want to say that, that LAFC didn't learn their same lesson when they decided to send Walker Zimmerman to, to Nashville SC and that I uh, always mentioned that trade is really, it is to this day still haunt LAFC. Like that was pro- probably one of the worst trade that they, they made with the way that, you know, I know they did get a lot of money for Walker Zimmerman, but the fact that you become the, the two-time defender of the year and winning that award back-to-back years it just makes you feel like is it really worth it to get like one million dollar genetic cashing money when you literally just gave up uh, up the best defender for for two years in a row and you know i thought tristan blackman definitely has that upside to be be that player and the fact that they kind of leave him unprotected is kind of interesting and especially with lafc this season you know one of the big issue that they had this season was on the defensive end and i would think that they were thinking about maybe protecting some of their their best defender or at, at least at the very best i don't think tristan blackman was one of the re- reason why that that back line wa- was terrible and and the fact that you know they decided to leave him unprotected and and you know in some way they kind of did did get something back of it because you know it seems like uh charlotte and lafc kind of had a gentleman agreement because this is where we get to the the final pick in the expansion draft where charlotte fc decided to pick ishmael to jury from nycfc and Charlotte immediately set, sent it to to LAFC. Though LAFC still had to pay about four hundred thousand k general allocation money, and yeah, you know, for Charlotte FC, you talk about the money that they they made. They made almost a million dollar of general allocation money, which I think that's the most that any team has made in the expansion draft. And certainly, it's a smart move for them to to get more money so that they can improve the squad. But as I said, you know, I feel like this is kind of a gentleman agreement that you know when when. The when Charlotte FC selected one of the pl- players from LAFC, they, they kind of said, "Well, we'll we'll give you kind of like a trade off and, and send you a, a decent player that is Ishmael Tajuri Shradi from NYCFC to you." Though they still kind of had to pay four hundred thousand general allocation money to, to get him. So I'm not sure if that maybe is a good gentleman agreement. Though I also heard re- recently that they were thinking about selecting Pablo Ceciaga from LAFC so they kind of also had had that gentleman agreement of the fact that we'll promise we won't, won't select him but we of course will maybe select one of your your better defender in exchange for for a decent attacker though you still kind of had had to pay for him though I think the biggest thing that maybe was also part of the gentleman agreement is the fact fact that you know you, you know LAFC will be protected next year in terms of of the expansion draft after having won their player being selected but overall i think you know if you're lafc i'm not sure if lafc fans can be happy or not i, I mean i 
I can understand why some fans are not happy because, you know, giving up Tristan Blackman feels like it's the same mistake that they made when they gave up Walker Zimmerman to Nashville SC. But on the other hand, you get get to Jury Schrotty, who I feel like he might be the replacement for for Diego Rossi, and that maybe this is a, a sign that Rossi probably is not going to be coming back to LAFC. I mean, he's still on loan with Fe Fenerbahce, and we'll see whether or not, not it Fenerbahce is going to buy him outright and LAFC can make some money out of that but this may be a sign that that they might might need a replacement for Rossi and to Drew Schrodi I've, I've said it before I, I think he is definitely a very decent player and because of the fact that NYCFC had just such an embarrassment of riches on the attack you know he hasn't been able to get into the starting 11 because of how good that attack is and I've also said before you know in any other team I think he would definitely crack the starting 11 now the only issue I will say that Tujuri Shradi has been having is that he's been kind of an been injury prone lately and that you know when you get an injury prone kind of player it's it's could be a be a fragile kind kind, kind of a player that you have to deal with but you know Tujuri Shradi will definitely be a guy that uh, I think he, he's a very deep decent attacker and again you know for LAFC they they need to find an answer for Rossi and I think Tajuri Shradi is a decent re replacement for that but going back to the Vancouver and I kind of didn't talk a lot about uh you know them getting Tristan Blackman again you know some people say it might be of a, a little bit of an overpay but I I say that it's a good signing with the way that Blackman is definitely going to help anchor that that back line and especially with the way that I think this also maybe is a, is a signing that they're they're needing because they know that they're probably not going to bring back Bruno Gasper in in their team and that in a way in in order to kind of replace him you know I think they're going to to try to spend some money to to replace him there and I think Tristan Blackman is definitely a good replacement in case if Bruno Gashford is not going to be coming back to the Whitecaps next season but either way let me know in the comments below what do you think of the expansion draft that Charlotte FC has uh do you like some of the picks that they of course course did do you disagree with some of the picks that they had but let me know in the comments below but until then hope you guys enjoyed this video if you do make sure you like smash that subscribe button and yeah i of course will see you guys next time